Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live, and tonight it is my pleasure to welcome our three guests from the movie that is released today to theaters and video on demand. We have Tara Perry on the left, we have Jordan Wayne Long up there on the right, and at the bottom, <laughs> sorry Matt, had to just the way it all worked out, Matt, <laughs> Matt Glass is on the bottom. I want to welcome all three of you. The movie is called Ghosts uh, of the Ozarks. It came out today. Uh, I've seen it. It's a fascinating movie. So I just want to go quickly uh, around the board with you guys, starting with Tara. How does it feel to the day that you've probably been waiting for happen? Are there nerves? Is there excitement? How are you feeling today? I feel pretty good today, actually. It's funny. We woke up this morning. We both, Jordan and I, congratulated each other and then... Yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought too much about it. I've just been like texting a lot of friends and family and everyone saying congratulations. So that's been really fun. Uh, and tomorrow we're, we're getting to go to the theater. So that'll, that'll be more in my face, realistic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's actually happening. And like I discussed before we went live, I congratulated all three of you because it is no small feat in today's world to get a movie from script, financing, getting it shot to actual, you know, distribution. Jordan, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yeah, no, it's been it's been great. It's been calm. We've just kind of I, I, I built a desk today to just kind of like relax. Get so uh, no, it's it. it's a yeah, it's a big relief. We we've been working on this thing every day for a long time. So you're right. It just feels really good to like be getting it out there. Absolutely. Now, Matt, from uh, your background, it looks like you're the techie in the, in the group. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how, how have you been feeling today? I've just been hacking the mainframe all day. No, uh, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, just I think similar to Jordan, it's just just kind of getting my mind on other things and just being happy it's out there. And so let yeah. me give a, a little synopsis to our audience of what Ghost of the Ozarks is all about. It takes place uh, post Civil War era uh, in a town called Norfolk. That is correct, right? Norfolk. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Norfolk. Norfolk. Okay, so I, I live in Virginia, so I'm used to saying Norfolk. Because, right. uh, so anyway, it takes place post Civil War uh, in sort of a, a walled off community uh, that is surrounded by the legends of it being haunted by ghosts in the nearby forests. So when you go into it, uh, you know people have this expectation, and then we're throwing a lot of twists and turns throughout the movie. So it's it's definitely a wild ride. Now, Matt, I want to ask you, this started out as a short film back in 2016. So how did the evolution play out from a short film in 2016 to it becoming a feature film? Well, I think this might be more of a Jordan question, but uh, we did the short film together, all three of us actually, but it was originally based on Jordan's idea Jordan, you want to take yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead, Jordan. Take over. You're better. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, uh, I come from a small town in Arkansas called Bald Knob, and uh, there happened to be these vigilantes from the 1800s called the Bald Knobbers in the Ozark Mountains. Wow. So as a small kid, kid, I was just terrified of these, you know, this idea of these vigilantes, even though they weren't around anymore. And that's really where the idea came from. Uh, brought it to Matt. We shot the short film with Tara and Tommy in 2016. And then uh, I started working on the feature with Tara uh, that October. So yeah, that's crazy. I, I, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, I can't believe the day is finally here. It's great. So it took uh, several years after the short came out to writing the feature script uh, to actually starting sh to shoot the film itself. Yeah, we had a couple other films in between there. We shot a film that Matt wrote called Squirrel. And then we did, uh, we produced a film called 12 Hour Shift in between there. And so a lot of rewrites uh, for Ghosts of the Ozarks. And we started uh, building the town in August of 2019. Okay, okay. Now, the Matt and Jordan, you guys both directed this film. Uh, Tara and Jordan uh, wrote the feature script according to imdb is that is that accurate yep that's correct now tara you're also a leading role in the film you play uh the character of annie uh 
who is a fascinating character. She's not a follower. So how would you describe Annie to our audience? Yeah, exactly that. She's not a follower. She is. She lives in a time where, well, you know, it, it's it's in the 1860s, so it's not a time where uh, women have leading roles a lot, and she does in this town, and that was really good. That was really fun to get to do. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. It was fun to get to write her and then to get to play her. I was very excited because <laughs> I wrote her the way I wanted to get to play her, hoping I get to play her, and I did. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about this film that captured me right away like i said it takes place right after the civil war but in this community it doesn't matter and it, this is actually said in the movie what color your skin is everyone is viewed equally uh when you guys were writing the feature uh did you guys go into history to find anywhere where that was actually true or was it something that you guys just came up with uh, I guess we'll go with Jordan on this one. Sure. I mean, we looked at a lot of, uh, you know, James McCune isn't based off of a, a real person, but James McCune, the name is from the first black doctor uh, that in American history, uh, he was born in 1814, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, had a, has quite the story. So we were looking at a lot of historical uh, evidence to kind of like base our fable off of um, but no, this community, there really wasn't one that existed. Uh, it was just something that we really wanted to play out a lot of ideas in and, yeah, and, and tell a fable our own way. Very nice. Now, Matt, uh, directing this film, uh, you're part of the directing. Uh, it's filled with great imagery, uh, scary stuff, uh, the wood scenes, uh, all that smoke, which we find out as the film progresses, all that good stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you find this challenging to shoot? Yeah, I think uh, definitely. Well, Jordan, so the majority of the town Jordan built. So he was, he really had a control of like that end of the visual. And I was also the DP. So it was my job to like try to do the angles and work with the lighting team and all that kind of stuff. So we're both kind of in charge of the look of the thing as well as being the directors. But it's really interesting to have the scale of a huge town where you can do anything but then you have the limitations of a budget and the limitations of time. And it suddenly becomes like, how do we shoot this the best we can with the time we have and with the money we have? And it's like this weird, it's like being right next to a huge pile of gold, but you know, you can only grab at the gold for one second. You're like, how much do I take? How do I take it? And it's such a hard balancing act to figure out. It was definitely a lot of stress, but. I can imagine. Now this has a great cast in it. Uh, we got Phil Morris, Angela Bettis, uh, Tim Blake Nelson, Tara, uh, also in the cast. So how long did the casting process uh, take? And do you guys feel you struck gold with the people that you were able to cast in these roles? And, you know, let's start with Matt on that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we really lucked out. Everybody was amazing and better at their role than I think we could have imagined. So we were very lucky to have such a great cast. And Tara actually did a lot of the casting herself. Ooh. Tara, you want to fill in from there? You know <laughs> yeah, more I was, details I was of that. Also, yeah, I was also the casting director, I suppose. Um, and, you know, we we thought Tor would be played great by Tim Blake Nelson. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we brought David and Christina Arquette on, as producers, um, he said, well, he's a buddy of mine. I'll just email him the script and see what he thinks. And so after he read it, he was like, yeah, I like it. I'm in. So we were so excited to have him on board. Um, and then we had previously worked with Angela Bettis on 12 hour shift and she is just an angel human. We love her and we'll want to work with her always. Um, and so we, we called her up and we were like, can we please send you our, our newest our script? And, uh, she read it, loved it, said, I'd love to come hanging out with y'all in Arkansas. Uh, and yeah, and uh, getting to play Annie was awesome. Uh, obviously, Tommy Hobson, he was written, James was written with Tommy in mind. So that getting to work out was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we actually, uh, Jordan and I wrote the role of Matthew with Phil in mind as well, because I previously worked with him uh, on a Roddenberry project. Mm -hmm. And and his voice is just so incredible. So writing the dialogue for Matthew, it was like we could hear it. Uh, through his voice so the fact that he was available and he wanted to do it was icing on the cake 
and finding Joseph Rude was incredible because he's such he's the perfect William yes. <laughs> and and he's blowing up now so yeah we really lucked out yeah you guys put together a great cast now to you know really show all the different hats that you guys wore in this production Matt you also did the score for the film is that true yes yeah that's true is there anything that Matt can't do guys <laughs> No, I'm not good at talking to people. But, uh. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we know that on medium budget, low budget films, everybody has to chip in beyond their title to to get to get it out there. Uh, were the budget constraints uh, really tight? I mean, I'm not asking for numbers. But was there stuff that you wanted to do with the film, Jordan, that you were not able to do because of budgetary constraints? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was a low budget. It was a million dollar feature. And, and, and we, we stretched that as far as we could. But, you know, building a whole town and, and, and COVID and all of that um, really took a big chunk of that. And uh, But what I like about everybody that we have on our team, I mean, you see it with the costume design and the makeup, um, they went above and beyond. And I mean, the the costume people were making dresses for Angela Bettis like three days before we started shooting because we couldn't do the traditional um, fittings with COVID and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, just watching people step up from those limitations and just shine, that, that was really neat. Um, but I am looking forward to uh, a little bit more freedom and time to uh to play out stuff that's absolutely sure. absolutely tara i would say the main underlying theme of this movie when you get through with it it's all about greed and power uh you know when you by the time you're done with the film uh would you agree with that a and uh b being a co-writer on the script is that what you guys were going for it's really interesting. I haven't ever told anyone, we've never discussed like, this is what we'll say the themes were. Cause I really like when people watch it and they take away. Cause I feel like there's several that are woven in and, and it is, it, it is absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. I mean, the, the tale is old as time. Um, but it is, it's one of those things that I haven't really pushed the gas in either, either direction because I kind of want people to watch it and pull what they pull from it. Okay. Uh, that's what I pulled from it. Like when the movie was done, I'm like, wow, this was a story uh, about, you know, mankind and how accurate it is that they're after power and money. Uh, and there's a lot of social commentary with that in today's world. Uh, would you agree with that as well, Jordan? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, watching our lead character, James, kind of like, traverse that world is is my favorite part um of the film i love you know how he goes into this place that's kind of built for him mm -hmm. and, and and built to be good for him and yet when he sees uh something's not afoot he has to kind of decide you know me or everybody and and i love watching that journey you know unfold for him and tommy does it so well he absolutely does uh now matt when it came to working with the cast and directing everybody, uh, did you give them leeway, uh, you know, when it came to how they wanted to do stuff? Or did you have very specific instructions on how you envisioned a certain scene or sequence to play out? I think the majority of the cast, just thinking off the top of my head, we all, we just knew they were great actors and that they would do something great with the part. And they all brought a little something extra to it. I know like early on, we wanted to make it clear to Tommy that this guy was like not confident and not whatever, like, you know, not a lot of eye contact. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, he's got a lot going on that he's sort of ashamed of from his past. That's the only note I think. And that was so early on, he adjusted to it. It was before we shot and he just picked it up so well. So I can't think of anybody that went down the wrong path and we're like, no, wait a second. It was awesome to watch everybody bring something completely new to the table than what you've had in your head and envisioned. And, you know, we had a scene with Phil and Tommy that we had kind of envisioned would be, you know, more aggressive than it was. And they came in with this really soft spoken and it kind of blew everyone away in the room. And I think we looked at each other and we're like, oh man, it is so nice when you hire professionals that just elevate everything, 
you know, that you give them. And uh, you can't ask for better, no, honestly. No, you can't. And I've, I've said this before. I remember I one interview I did with a director and he said 70% of directing is casting. So hats off to you, Tower. You did a great job casting. <laughs> Thank and you. hats off to you guys for directing it. Uh, let's talk about the supernatural element in this film, the, the ghosts uh, that are in the woods. Uh, how critical was that to the story, would you say, Jordan? Well, I think, um, you know, the ghosts work on a few levels for the film, and uh, it was really important to make sure that uh, they were elevated enough to where you would believe that these people would, would stick around in this town. Um, and I think, you know, it was really helped by like Matt score mm -hmm. and which he also uh, used some of uh, Tara's vocals to kind of like siren in the woods. And, you know, it, it we, we, we put so much emphasis on that in a bunch of different directions that, uh, yeah, it was it was a really interesting process. We had some Jaws moments, to be honest, because of COVID, we, we had the suit built in another state uh by some of our wonderful costume or or you know makeup people and when we got it out to arkansas and we put it on uh there was no fittings and so it was pretty tough to move in and we were on these big stilts for it and everything and uh yeah you, it, it became one of those you were. <laughs> yeah jordan yeah jordan, jordan was also the ghost <laughs> i didn't know that but um and our first ac hopped in when i just couldn't possibly because it was pretty tough to wear those legs but you know it became one of this thing where we really had to use it sparingly and I like how that turned out because you you really have to be intentional with with when you do show it off and uh that was a fun challenge to to take on nice uh what uh when it came to shooting the ghost scenes Matt um was there any CGI or was it all practical mostly practical there is one shot that was really augmented with cgi um it involves a mouth opening scene which i guess that was actually we shot that too practical but we just yeah. put it in cgi and there were certain elements of them like when they were close-ups of their eyes that was done uh okay. in, in the computer. but mostly mostly practical now uh tara as jordan said uh you know this was in the Ozarks, which is in Arkansas, I believe, uh, because it's where you grew up. Are you guys all from the same area? So I'm from Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is uh, in the northeast of the state. Jordan is from Bald Knob, which is about 55 minutes southwest of Jonesboro. But Matt's actually from Utah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. we, we know that you guys did the short in 2016. How far back? When did you guys start working together? Uh, Matt Jordan and I, and I, okay. No, please. Uh, Jordan and I started working together and we moved out to LA in 2013. We met in grad school and we started doing documentary, short documentaries for artists in 2000, January, 2013. And then slowly started doing more like short films and then feature films. And so it's been, however, what is that? Eight, nine years, right? Yeah. 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 And I did a Real short with y'all, uh, Bria Grant and I were actors in a short that y'all did in 2015. Yeah, I think. That's right. So we had yeah. actually worked together a year before and then the next summer is when we ended up shooting Ghost Short. Now, Tara, yeah. uh, how excited were you to reprise the role of Annie in a feature film as opposed to a short? Did you, I mean, when you played Annie in the short, did you really like the character when it came time to do the feature film? Now that, of course, there's a big time difference going from a short to a feature film, was there a lot of stuff that you wanted to do with his character? Yeah, it's actually, it's really awesome as an actor to get to be in the short film and then also get to be in the feature. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. Luckily, um, I was a co-writer on it and uh, a producer. So I had some pull <laughs> to get myself in there uh, or I forced everyone to cast me. Um, but yeah, it was really fun because I'd been... Um, most recently, I was on uh, a Nickelodeon show with Thomas, actually, um, for several years. And, and that show is incredible and super fun. But at the time, especially in 2016, I was like, I want to play a character like a badass who gets to fight and gets to, you know, like really take charge. And so getting to write Annie in that way, like I said earlier, it was so fun and, and really awesome to get to actually play her. Um, yeah, I got to do all kinds of fight scenes and stunts and 
it's really fun, but really exhausting. <laughs> it's actually really hard to be completely like lifeless and let you know a, a six, seven tall man carry you around and you just flop. <laughs> You're like, that actually really hurt my neck. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was watching this film, uh, it really reminded me of a film from several, several years ago, The Village. I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen that film. Mm -hmm. uh, Love it. So, Jordan, was there in, any inspiration drawn from The Village into Ghosts of the Ozarks? I mean, I love him, not Shyamalan's work. I, I think he's done some great movies. Um, so yeah, definitely just an overall influence of like Signs is one of my favorite movies. I, I think it's a great horror mm -hmm. movie. Um, but uh, no, we really, like I mentioned before, we really wanted to set this fable in a, in a, in a space that we could control everything and kind of set up the parameters for our ideas to kind of come out. And uh, so I would say that after we had someone read it the first time, it was evident that the village was always going to be brought up. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, you know, that we've we've been aware of ever since. But it's something that we it was a story that we just really wanted to dive into in that world. So, yeah, fun. Absolutely. Uh, now, Tara, uh, is there any part of Annie that would you that you would say is similar to yourself uh or is annie the complete opposite like annie like she's not a follower she you know she has her beliefs and she's not shy about sharing them she's a badass uh are there any similarities between your character annie and yourself that's tara I'm perry I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like that she, uh, you know, she always stands up for herself, but being in the, the town of North Fork, uh, it's tough because she thinks something is afoot. You know, she doesn't necessarily think that everything is as it was, it was, it seems as it seems. And I think she finally stands up for more than just herself and stands up for, um, I don't know she ends up making a big life change which is always hard to do and i've had to do that and i i feel like that gave me the strength to be able to let that show through annie you had a lot of scenes with the good new doctor in town did you guys work good together the chemistry oh. on screen was amazing between the oh. two of you uh Thank did you guys you. bond right away oh yeah i i tommy and i i love that man he and i were cast on the fresh Bee band I, I was cast on that show in 2010 so I have known and worked with him for over a decade. So, you know, getting to bring him in on this was was incredible because I had only gotten to work with him on the Fresh Beat Band. And uh, I knew that he could do a role like this, although mm -hmm. he had never had a chance to do a role like this. He's yeah. been acting since he was five years old. Yeah. And so getting to be like, hey, we want you for the lead of this movie. We want you to come be this badass, you know, guy. And he came and he brings such a vulnerability to the scene to his work and and then in the end just becomes a total badass i just i think he did such a great job so the chemistry is real i love him <laughs> jordan you uh had a role in the short film uh you played william was it hard uh or was it a conscious conscious decision for you not to be in the feature film or why aren't you in this film basically is the question um we we shot this short film and we we shot it for like three hundred dollars john so it was really like hey we can get tommy and tara out here but me and matt were like i like my dad's riding the horse in the shore and you know we're kind of doing all of our own stunts so it was merely out of necessity i was happy to give the role over to joseph mm -hmm. he's safe <laughs> You didn't seem pleased at the time during the short. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm ornery when I'm an actor for Matt. Oh, I'm, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, how do you feel about shooting period pieces like this? Uh, it's great. I love movies that are able to not exist in the real world. Like if you can create a whole world where it doesn't feel like you're shooting it anywhere that you can just go to, it's like always my favorite thing. Like the movie Brazil, which is very different from this movie, but it doesn't look like reality. It's such a, its own thing. And I just love being able to like escape to somewhere else. When you got on the set, Matt, and it was time to start principal photography, uh, were there any surprises that you had to face uh, that you were not expecting uh, again, along the lines of challenges? 
Uh, well, we had COVID to deal with with yeah. all the yeah. masks and all that stuff. But I think it was the first time we had worked with such a big lighting crew. So I think the challenge of the time it requires to properly light a set versus like the documentary quick style we used to do stuff was a big challenge for me specifically. Because I would go, I went to the first day with like 35, 40 shots. I'm like, let's do this. And then at the end of that first day, I was like, okay, we can do 10, maybe 12 <laughs> shots a day. I got to rethink this thing. COVID changed the entire entertainment industry and it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, staying with you, Matt, uh, shooting under COVID conditions, uh, you know, was it, I, I mean, I know it's difficult. Everybody has to be separated into zones. Certain people cannot walk into other people's zones. Uh, is it really bad or, you know, did everybody know that the main important thing here is to keep everybody safe and not get sick? We filmed right at the beginning of COVID. So I think we were kind of the guinea pigs for the whole system. It was so early on, we were doing the zone system. We had everybody getting tested and all that kind of stuff, but we didn't have a previous example to show us that it's going to work and that it's safe and this is how you do it. So we were just hoping that we were doing enough and being stressed out about doing enough the whole time. And then when we completed it and we're like, okay, it does work. And then you've seen that basically the almost the exact same system that we use that I think Jordan made up most of it um, is what all SAG movies do now. So it's, yeah. we were looked out. Absolutely. And if you want to elaborate, Jordan, you can feel free. We just, you're right, John, about like everybody that was there was like, you know, we, we, we spoke to them hours beforehand and we're like, what are your concerns? How can we make you feel comfortable and, and how can we get, really everybody making the movie and get some money during this like you know unknown pandemic at the time and so everybody gave us their ideas and everybody came ready to be in that bubble and do their job and they did and and it, that was really incredible just to watch the dedication you know keeping the mask on all day during the heat in you know in the middle of june in in arkansas, in arkansas. and you know, and they just they just did it because everyone really, we were all just thankful to see people and, and to get to get to be the lucky ones to be around somebody and make our craft at that time. So it was quite the experience and it'll be different on our next film because, you know, we've been farther along and there's a more system in place. So it's more, I'm excited to see what that feels like. Yeah. It's been two years now and it's it's the new norm now shooting under covid conditions it's the new norm tara how long did shooting take uh we shot for 30 days okay. so we did six five day weeks yeah so we june 15th we ended right before the end of july yeah That's in awesome. the hottest most humid most mosquito -y <laughs> time in arkansas <laughs> uh yep. jordan this film according to imdb is like purely classified in the genre of horror thriller but I would say it goes beyond that as well uh, into drama and a lot of other subgenres. Uh, would you agree with that? Uh, you know, let's say instead of horror thriller, horror thriller, drama, and man, you could add in a couple of more as well. That's like, that's a huge compliment, I think, for us because we just kind of like to you know, express our own style and, and, we, and HCT has really been just going after our own style and, and, and running with that. And that actually makes me really happy. We don't, it's definitely not just a horror film. No. No. Um, it, it, I mean, the musical number, I think like helps, <laughs> helps that a ton to, to, to push that into something different, but you know, it is one of those things where it is difficult to just go with your own style because it's not it doesn't fit in the lane real easy but for us people i don't want to know any stuff, other way to do it yeah people want to put stuff in its box and this absolutely movie, and i get it yeah <laughs> and this movie fits in a lot of different boxes you know what i mean it has elements of a lot of different uh sub genres now either uh, any of you three did you have any part in editing cutting the film itself or did somebody else do that entirely I we had an editor, uh, but me and Jordan, we were there almost every day working with the editor, making cuts and all that kind of stuff. So okay. we definitely had a big hand in it. Uh, so I'm assuming you guys have all seen the final product. I want to go again around the board. Tara, watching, you know, when you saw it at the premiere, uh, when it was all cut 
edited, cut, ready to be seen. How do you feel about the movie that you made? Are you happy? Are you proud? Was it everything that you wanted it to be? Yeah, I am endlessly proud. I'm endlessly proud of these two guys. Uh, these two guys. Uh, and uh, watching myself play Annie, it was really fun because normally as an actor, when I watch something I've done, I still, like, I put myself the day that I shot it, and, like, it's too distracting. It's like I'm just watching myself do something. But the first time, because I didn't see the edits as they went along, I didn't I didn't want to see versions until they were like, all right, this is almost the done, finished cut. I watched it then, and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really proud of my performance, <laughs> which is not something I normally say. I'm like, oh, that was, that was fun, or I did good, or that was funny. But I was like, I was pretty engrossed in the film. I didn't feel like I was watching myself, which uh, is a compliment to myself. Uh, and I didn't feel Absolutely. like I was watching my friend, Tommy, you know, I felt like I was watching. Anyway, it, it was fun to take myself out as an actor and watch it as a producer and be like, we made it. We made a really fun movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Matt, I know directors are usually the most self-critical. Uh, did you watch it and you're like, man, I wish I would have done this differently or that differently, or were you really happy with the final piece? Uh, probably the first thing. And also I did, I was the colorist and I did the VFX and I did all the deliverables at the end. So, so you've seen I, the movie like a thousand seen, times. Yeah, a thousand times. I'm really excited for having like a year break from it mm -hmm. and being able to watch it without like that and just see what the movie actually is without all that like history attached to it. I'm looking forward to that. So I'll mark the calendar a year from today. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jordan, going the evolution from the short to the feature film, the feature film itself? Are you proud of the work that you guys did? Yeah, I'm, I'm endlessly proud. And yeah, we, we all are indie filmmakers. And so we, we, we know what that journey is like. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm like every, so many people helped out, like our families and and dear friends and and um, it was such a DIY craftsman approach because it had to be. And uh, I, I'm just really proud with, with what we ended up on screen with. And I hope people just have fun with it. You should be. <laughs> you should be very proud. Now, Jordan, the film premiered in Aust at the Austin Film Festival. Uh, was it because of COVID? Was it virtual? Was it in person? How did the festival go? It was actually in that, like weird spot where we were getting to do things and <laughs> so it was as a writer's festival i mean and and sean anthony davis uh came in big time and helped us uh, uh with rewriting the film and and cutting it i wanted to mention his name but we all went down to austin film festival for the writers conference and it was such a unique experience because um it we got to sit with so many professionals and see that we're all doing the same thing, that we're all on the same pursuit and that none of us are any different than, than anybody else. And no. that was awesome because we haven't been outside since we started shooting ghosts and we haven't talked to people. And so getting to jump into that film festival and, and it's an incredible festival. Tim Gray does a great job. And I, it was, it was a wonderful like little reprieve from, you know, the typical up. indie filmmaker yeah, yeah. and also and, being locked up for all, all that time to be out and you know interacting with other human beings that's priceless tara would you call yourself yeah. a horror fan i love horror movies big horror fan how about big you time. matt i would say yes but i was gonna say this earlier i feel like a horror the label of horror gets tough because there's a certain expectation for what a horror movie is mm -hmm. but i love that movies nowadays are like pushing what that means and horror movies aren't necessarily slashers anymore. No. It could be this whole completely different thing. I like the, all the people that are pushing the boundaries. I'm excited about boundary pushing. Absolutely. Horror. Jordan, for me personally, horror. Yeah. You know, I could sit back and watch a good blood and gore film and enjoy it. But for me, it's about character and storytelling. I love character building, storytelling, uh, and to be scared at the same time. And uh, Ghosts of the Ozarks has a little bit of all that, you know, blended in together with it. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah. And, you know, I think like for me, what I love about horror is that it's a really safe place to air your 
everything you're scared about and, and everything that you you want to express to other people to kind of like feel some camaraderie with you know whatever you're terrified of and it's a great place to put an allegory um of of your deepest fears and i love being able to 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 put that out with you know characters and watch their arc and watch them have to go through this stuff safely uh because i'm just watching them i'm not actually having to go through it so yeah. I, I just love being able to see the world through you know somebody else's eyes and and experience that absolutely yeah and see see how they react it's great matt a lot of this depends on the director uh are you a fan of putting in like modern new social commentary in your films or do you want your films to be you know completely devoid of what's going on in the real world and when the audience sits down at the theater at home give them an escape from the real world that's a tough question i think both of those things are true i mean i think it's important to put what's happening in the real world to some degree in your film but it should never be a thing where that's all the film is yeah done, so you want to be a thing where if, if people want that kind of thing it's there if they don't want it they don't have to acknowledge that and it still means something Mm -hmm. It's like a weird, tough balance of like keeping everybody happy, but also getting your message out if you have a message, but not shoving it down anybody's throat. Absolutely. And yeah. being entertaining at the same time. Yeah. It's yeah. also hard to watch a movie and not relate it to something that's going on. You know what I mean? Like it, it's what I love watching movies that I saw when I was 10 years old, watching it again at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And it means something different every time I watch it because I find myself relating to different characters as I've aged. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jordan, let uh, tell the audience, uh, I know it, come, it came out today on Video On Demand, but which platforms exactly can people rent or buy uh, Ghosts of the uh, Ozarks from? Awesome. Yeah, we're on iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, YouTube, um, really anywhere you can rent a film. We're lucky enough to be on that platform, I believe. So I, I know that Amazon uh, is kind of the place I always go, yeah. uh, but uh, you can get it in a lot of spots. Everywhere, pretty much the top transactional video on demand places out there. Matt, it's yeah. also being released to limited theaters today. Is this in just one state or several states throughout the country? As of right now, it's Los Angeles, Houston, Austin, Phoenix, New York. And we just picked up Iowa about 30 minutes ago. Really? Cool. Oh, yeah. Hey. That's great. Yeah. I got to tell some of my friends. Now, uh, so that's fun. XYZ Films, is that the production company or the distributor? Distributor. Distributor. Yeah. Awesome. Did and that's get, James Shapiro. Did you guys get picked up for distribution before you started filming, while you were filming, or after the premiere at the Austin Film Festival? Jordan, when did the film actually get picked up for distribution? Uh, we started talks with them, uh, was it May of 2021? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. So, yeah, so, so it was a, it was about six months before Austin Film Festival. Nice. Almost nice. a year after we filmed it, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's no small feat. You guys put together a great film in COVID, at the beginning of COVID, and I just cannot imagine how proud you must be feeling today and you should it's a great Thanks. movie guys uh the movie's called ghost of the ozarks it's available on your top uh rent or buy movie platform of choice it's a in limited theaters as well i want to thank all three of you for being our guests uh any i'll let you guys share any final thoughts before we go let's start with tara yeah, I just hope, I really hope people enjoy it. I love the music so much. It elevates every scene. So I, that's I think Matt. That every, that's Matt. And that's Matt. Again, <laughs> these, these guys. Yeah. And, and I think the, the soundtrack should be available at some point. So I think everyone's going to really love that. Okay. How about you, Jordan? Um, I am, I'm just really proud. And it's cool to be on this with Tara and Matt because uh, we work together every single day and uh i, I am I'm, I'm unbelievably proud to to get to work with them because that's what it's about making movies with friends and and, and doing what you love so um I, I just appreciate if people watch it and get get some fun out of it and some enjoyment so thanks matt. a lot for having us on john oh it's my pleasure matt you know let's pretend like you know tara and jordan are not here 
They do some stuff. Do you want to continue working with these guys in the future? <laughs> I've never met them before. I don't know who these two people are. They just took us up. No, it's, we're, I think, feel like we're a great team. And yeah, let's keep making movies. Absolutely. Keep making <laughs> if they films, want. guys. That, that's yeah, what yeah. it's all about. I want to thank all our three guests. I want to thank our audience for tuning in, whether you're watching this live or watching this later on. Uh, when it's yeah, archived. thank you. Hey, I just want to say something to all the people like commenting. Thank you guys so much. I've been reading them, and uh, yeah, that's so nice of you. Thank you. Absolutely. I can't see that far. <laughs> I read. I don't have my glasses on. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Again, guys, the movie's called Ghost of the Ozarks. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. I want to thank again Tara Perry, Jordan, and Matt. So watch the film. You'll definitely have a blast watching it. Thank you to our guests on behalf of our guests and myself stay safe stay walking guys good night good night thanks john